Dang it. Yeah, so here we go again with my 5155 IBM on the bench and in a previous video I managed to um, upgrade this thing adding a, a RAM card and a hard drive but things going are going weird with those two things let me show you in the previous video uh, I think it was my first video on YouTube, so it's pretty cringe <laughs> right now. So, uh, never mind. Uh, in a previous video, I managed to uh, install uh, this RAM expansion card, and as you can see, on that it is missing a chip. It can work without this row of chip, but it behaves strangely in the computer so I managed to find another chip for that and so later we have to install this and for the hard drive as you can see here this computer originally had two floppy drive from five and a quarter inch uh, 360k uh, as you can see right now it has an hard drive it is an ST251-1 it has uh, something like 40 meg 43 megabyte is way too much for that <laughs> and it catch on fire <laughs> the last time I tried to install in that um, so yeah, it's not working properly, it makes uh, an horrible sound uh, So, I managed to find... Yeah! Yep! Another MFM drive This is a Seagate ST225 It was like the, 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 the most famous hard drive back in the days And the IBM actually was supplying this hard drive with the XT class computer. In fact, in that machine right here, this is an IBM in, uh, XT model 286, I have an ST225. Uh, it has the plate for the full height, uh, but it is not. So, we are going to change the, the hard drive and uh, we are going to configure the RAM expansion card uh, way better and I managed to find <laughs> this is really awesome for me yeah an original copy for MS-DOS 3.1 I think uh, by IBM this is an Italian copy uh, of MS-DOS so <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I really love this thing. What we are going to do? Um, we are going to fix the hard drive situation right now. Then we are going to fix the, the RAM expansion card. And then we are going to install this copy of MS-DOS. So let me uh, show you what's the problem with this, this thing. Before I get into this, let me show you what's wrong with this computer. First of all, the terrifying noise that the hard disk makes during startup. Second, this screen appears asking to install the hard disk, which is currently installed. In order to access the content of C, I have to answer no twice. Let me 
answer no and again no now an error message appears that reminds me that there is no operating system inside and this is because I recently tried to low level format the drive and to delete and redo the partition for MS-DOS. Anyway, if we answer yes to the installation screen, everything freezes and either the drive and the computer stop responding. Uh, do you want to install this unit? Yes. Let me show you what's happening. So the optimal interleave with the system is 3, but whatever, I don't care. Are these parameters correct? Yes. And that, that's it. It freezes. <laughs> I can't do anything and the drive isn't working so yeah that's it <laughs> uh, I think this hard drive is pretty big though. so we boot into MS-DOS 2.1 because my disk for MS-DOS 3.3 is baked let's open FDisk and create a partition for some reason, when asked if I want to use all the available space, the partition is created with all the cylinders, but as you will see later, it will be only 10 MB against the 43 MB of the 80, 817 cylinders. In MS-DOS 3.3 it was not possible for me to use more than 10 MB but only 615 cylinders were used for active partition, so I don't know why this is happening. It. So uh, let's create a new DOS partition. Do you wish to turn that? Uh, yes. So now we should be able to um, enter C. But um, whoa, 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 what's that? <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I don't know. If we go to for, uh, format C, in body parameter, um, okay. And this will take a while, so I have formatted the hard disk and uh, I have transferred the um, operating system MS-DOS 2.1 on the hard disk. Let's go to C. Um, and I mix that. Come on, come. That's pretty it's okay. So let's reboot and again this screen. No. <laughs> and that's not booting. <laughs> Why? No. Look at that! We have garbage on that. That's not a RAM file. What is this? <laughs> and now everything frees. So, yep. Let's power it up another time. And as you can see, that's not booting. Let's install my floppy and insert my floppy. Okay, now it's booting. Sort of. <laughs> it freezes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, so. Um, the next thing is to install 
that hard drive. So I already, oops, I already tried this, and this is working, uh, even in his computer. But uh, as you can see, it has a uh, different plates, uh, those rails right here. So I have to remove the older drive from the second bay right here. And uh, this is going to be a pain in the ass <laughs> because uh, so little space in this computer. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this uh, uh, with a time lapse. Yeah, I think this is the magic of editing. All right, so uh, sorry for the uh, bad point of view, but uh, my workspace is really tight so I don't know how to, to do this but it's okay so um, I have to remove the hard drive back in here and this is held by that screw that screw and then let me show you that screw right there the second one and another screw right beneath this card that's going to be uh, oh, a very long and tiring project let's get started so um okay let's Disconnect the power and the power from the floppy and this tube slides off. Right, so remove the power. Uh, so yeah, this space is so tight okay so here we go and um, as you can see uh, right here um, it catches fire right here on the power rail so uh, I really don't know if this is this is going to, to currently work it's missing the the resistor terminator yeah. Oh, that's that's strange. That may uh, cause some issues. I have another of that. So yeah, let me check it. Now I want to uh, swap the cover from these two drives. And yep, that's it. As you can see here, uh, uh, we have that uh, little thing for the LED, and here I have uh, I used this piece of plastic. Because um, this front plate does not have, so I'm wondering if I can use that. Uh, I should. Let me try. Okay, so that's removed. And there are four little tabs. One, two, three and four. So you have to push them back. <laughs> And eventually it will snap in place. Eventually. Hmm, it's looking nice. <laughs> I 
I really don't know how to insert that. Okay. Straightforward, I guess. And yeah. That's pretty neat. Uh, okay. That capacitor snapped completely, so I have to fix that uh, before installing the video card. And solder like so. It's okay, it's hardy enough. Okay, so attempt number two. Let's reinstall the CGA graphics card. On this motherboard, there is a jumper uh, in order to set uh, the video card type and uh, how many floppy drives there are and things like that. So the last time I worked on that I didn't set that the, the, uh, there was only one uh, floppy drive. So this time I need to set this. So as you can see there is that jumper and in just one second, I'm going to show you how to configure that in order to use only one floppy drive. So I am currently on uh, minus zero degree, which is a, a delightful uh, website for the IBM 51XX uh, type of machines. And so this is the um, switch, uh, the deep switches for the 5160 because the motherboard in the 5155 is one of the early uh, 5160 motherboard. So as you can see right here, in order to set the floppy drives, uh, we have one floppy drive so I have to turn the uh, switch number 7 on and the switch number 8 on all right here we are the type of RAM expansion card that I have is a MEMO 576 as the name implies, it has 576 kilobytes when fully used, so it is very convenient for motherboard that have 64 kilobytes, like the very first ones of the IBM 5150. The configuration takes place through this deep switch in top right. The first two switches are used to configure how much RAM is installed in the computer and switch number 3 and 4 are used to select the RAM you want to use on the card. Switch number 5 must always be set to ON and switch 6 is for the parity chip, which in my case must be selected. Switches 7 and 8 are not present in my revision of the card and in any case they are not used. This leads me to think that my card is a clone and not the real MEMO-576, but in the end who cares, it just has to work. Clearly, in the case of an XT with an Intel 8088, it will not 
be possible to add more than 640 KB of RAM. In order to use the card without the chip in question, I had to use a strange configuration, setting the RAM on the MOBO to 128 KB and then using the remaining 512 on the card. And I did this because only this configuration allowed me to use partially bank 3, evading the chip problem. This, however, created problems when starting heavy programs, such as games. I don't know if this was due to the questionable hard drive or the RAM, however, it will now be properly configured. So far so good. Yeah, it has 640 kilobyte of RAM. Now we, uh, we are going to configure the HDD and install MS-DOS. Let me show you what's inside this thing before trying to install the operating system into the PC. So, we have this nice folder for the basics MS-DOS programs. That's in Italian, of course. We have the user guide, friendly user guide <laughs> kind of thing. This thing is, I mean, it's like new. I have other, other IBM manuals, this technical reference for the IBM 5150, and man, this is used. Someone worked really hard on this thing. Look at the, look at that. Look at the appendix. Look at these ruined uh, holes. But this, this is mint new. <laughs> yep. Guide for the activation of the apps. That's less user friendly. <laughs> And then we have the classic uh, user manual. This is brand new. The translation uh, for floppy disk <laughs> in Italian is mini disk, mini dischi. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. Nobody used that before me. I mean, it, Nothing special, really, it's just a manual for MS-DOS, so... Two diskettes. So the first is actually MS-DOS. This is DOS. <laughs> and uh, This is back when MS-DOS and PC-DOS were the same thing. DOS and PC-DOS were the same until uh, MS-DOS 5, so it's... Kind of neat. And this is. But those are uh, complementar programs for MS DOS. Mm. <laughs> That's neat. Type C has not been installed. Do we want to install? Yes. Let's see how it goes. Ah, uh, so. The ST225 has uh, 615 cylinders. Yep. It has four heads and 17 septos per track. No. Allora, ST. Two to five. Then is three, so interleave. We are going to select three as suggested from the from that. These parameters are correct. Yes, I want to enter the defect map. Yes. 
Yes. So we can now run those for the first time. <laughs> sort of. Let's run a uh, uh, disk. So we can create a new DOS partition. So uh, let's format C. So when I formatted the drive, I've got um, an error message about the um, track zero, defective track zero, and uh, the, to the impossible to use the drive. So I was a little bit upset with that. But just for fun, I tried to sys C the drive C. So if we go to C now, we should. Yeah, it is not. Um, let me uh, reboot the, the computer. It is missing. Uh, yeah. Oh dear. Don't do that, please. We're going to use S this time, and let's see how it goes. Ah, oh, no! Sure enough. Ah, uh, dang it! Track zero error, this is the dead. Uh. So let's run the diagnostic program on the disk, on the fixed disk, and let's see if we can fix it. I doubt it. Whatever, screw it. I, I try to. Yeah. Yes. Let's try MS DOS 2.1. Hmm. It seems to to have transferred the system, I think. So we just can remove the floppy disk and it's not booting. It's not booting. He is not booting. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Why? That's the dead hard drive that we put it in. Ah, uh, I don't think it is dead. Um, but it's unreliable. I managed to find yet another ST225. This actually was in my PC bit that I restored rather repaired recently and that's working just fine it has some um, bad sector but error but mm, not too much I'm going to install this all right um, moment of truth let's see how it goes So we go to F disk, we can create a DOS partition, yes. The 
in Italia, yes. Now the system will reboot. Now rebooting again, we can form a C. Yes. And we can format. So uh, this is take a while, so we'll see in a bit. I have copied the command.com uh, from the disk into the, the hard disk and it boots just fine and this is because this copy of DOS doesn't allow you to copy command.com with the command sys this is possible with MS-DOS 6.2 and 3.3 and 4 and 5 but not with the previous version of DOS previous of uh, 3.1 so uh, that's it now if I list the directory in C you can see I have command.com and obviously the file uh, IBM EO and uh, uh, this file system for the use of DOS yeah <laughs> So, um, C isn't working, X is working, V is working, but C isn't. Uh, now the, the C key works, I open the, the keyboard, now it's working, but it is it's strange so uh, to be sure that uh, no other keys are uh, acting strangely I am tested the keyboard I'm testing the keyboard with uh, the, the advanced diagnostic disk uh, everything seems to work just fine Okay, space up. So, even if installing IBM DOS 3.1 was kind of funny and definitely appropriate for this computer, <laughs> I mean, you could not run many programs in 3.1. It would be nicer MS DOS 3.3. I was wondering if I can uh, install MS DOS 6.22. And I've never succeeded trying to install MS-DOS on this computer. And that's because, as I, <laughs> as I figured it out right now, in this very moment, um, the drive, the floppy drive, is not capable of uh, reading correctly the, the floppy. So, I switched to another drive and I will use that drive to install MS-DOS 6.22 in that computer. This is also a 5 and a quarter, 360 kilobytes of RAM, so I had to purchase a copy of MS-DOS 6.22 on 5 and a quarter inch floppy disks. And <laughs> they are 13 of them. So it will be funny to, <laughs> to install yeah, I know, MS-DOS 6.22 is not the best choice for this type of machines. I'm going to use MS-DOS 6.22. And if that will not work properly, I can always switch to the previous DOS version. So it's not a big deal. My memory card is empty so I'm going to use the phone and I finished, I will restart All right, we have the prompt Look at that, how sweet Ah, oh, that's awesome That's really, really a, a, an improvement 
I'm so glad this worked. <laughs> I wasn't sure. The computer is back in one piece. Yeah, I tried to use the interlink and inter-server to exchange data between this computer and a more modern computer. But every try fails uh, due to the lack of port in the back of the computer. I installed a, a monochrome display adapter in order to use the parallel port, the printer port, and a lap link cable, but mm, no dice. I tried to use an iSync card in order to use a female uh, DB25 connector with my Windows 98 PC and with my IBM 5162 PC but still no luck so I'm pretty stuck with uh, 360 kilobytes of input of some sort the next uh, things I want to do is to buy a serial and parallel card 8-bit for this computer try to find a functioning XT2 CF module I have that card but it doesn't work with neither of my computers so I think I bought a, a 41 and so yep yeah. installing a, a sound card now I want to use an adlib on this thing but <laughs> as you probably know the adlib is quite rare today and uh, Quite expensive so I ended up choosing a Adlib clone for that machine that cost me around 60 euros so nothing too bad and yeah so there will be <laughs> a part 3 <laughs> on this computer gosh I had it from you know at least one year and I'm still working on that I hate it and I love it for that reason but now everything works and I, I managed to load <laughs> Prince of Persia on that computer so it will be nice to see you know keep in mind that there is an 8088 processor so it's <laughs> and uh, the CGA version of the game yeah. let's see and no sound card slow thing that's the lovely IBM 5155 thanks for watching and see you next time